VPNs are a funny thing. It's hard to think of another product that's so popular but has so many terrible options out there. What's more, there's a good chance that the people using those terrible products don't even know that the product they're using is bad. And on top of all that, some of those terrible products are being made by some of the biggest names out there. It's almost unfair, really. It's an entirely unregulated industry and making the wrong choice can have huge implications for the customer, not just financial ones either. In this video, we're going to shed a little more light on some of the worst free operators in the VPN world. But we're not just going to dogpile on obvious scams or the worst user-rated freebies on the app stores. There are hundreds of those. Instead, we're going to reveal and discuss five big name free VPNs that you've almost certainly heard of, but that are secretly awful. I'm Callum, you're watching Top 10 VPN. We better get started. First things first, all of the information I'm about to divulge is either open knowledge, freely available for you to find via the VPN's official website or via its apps, or first-hand knowledge gleaned through our expert testing. If you weren't aware, I don't do all this by myself. That would be impossible. I'm just the face of a full-time, dedicated VPN research team who do nothing other than test VPNs all day, every day. Well, they stop to eat and sleep sometimes, but we're working on that. Our testing methodologies are fully transparent and we always attempt to acknowledge their limitations wherever possible. You can find them on any page where we state the best and worst VPNs for a specific use. I won't be covering off every single aspect of these VPNs in this video, as that would take forever, but if you want more information and you want, then I highly recommend reading through the full review for each one, the links to which I will put in the description below. We're always as fair as possible, mixing in our own professional opinions alongside objective testing data. First up is the free version of Avira Phantom. You probably know Avira from its range of antivirus software, which it's been making for a pretty long time now. And, not to spoil the rest of the video, but best known for antivirus software will be something of a recurring theme here. Avira has the dubious honor of being the first one mentioned. Why is it the first one mentioned? Well, because it's the worst, of course. The paid version rated very poorly in our testing, but the free version of Avira Phantom VPN is nothing short of a disaster. You'd almost have to actively be searching out a worse VPN than this to find one. What makes Avira Phantom Free so bad? I'm delighted you asked. It's its logging policy and everything surrounding it. When reviewing a VPN, we firmly believe that privacy comes first. It doesn't matter what it specifically is that you want to use a VPN for, it should always offer a basic and reliable level of privacy and anonymity. Avira Phantom Free flaunts that straight out of the gate by breaking one of the VPN cardinal sins. It logs your IP address. Really, we could stop talking about that there. That's such an egregious thing to do as a VPN that we actually cap a VPN's rating if it does it. They instantly fail the privacy and logging policy section of our review, and there's no coming back from that. A VPN's job is to hide your IP address. If your VPN is retaining your IP address, that's a huge risk. But what happens if there's a server breach, or if it's forced to submit user logs in court? Revealing your IP address is as good as revealing your full name and where you live. Some VPNs say that they need to retain your IP address for operational reasons. That is untrue. There are plenty, plenty of VPNs that do not do it, and they all seem to work just fine. Avira is also located in Germany, which is a horrible country for data privacy laws. It's part of a much larger corporate structure, and that's something that shouldn't be overlooked. VPNs aren't its top priority. Antiviruses. The VPN is clearly treated as a second-class citizen in its product portfolio. Bad job, Avira. Do better. And to you watching at home, you should do better by picking a different VPN. Uh, hey, remember when I said that antivirus companies expanding into VPNs would be a recurring theme? I hope so, because it was like two minutes ago, and it's happening again already. The next VPN in our sites is McAfee Safe Connect Free VPN. Catchy name. As you may already know, founded in 1987 by the eccentric John McAfee, McAfee is one of the oldest antivirus software companies on the planet. 31 years later, it launches its VPN, and like Avira, its free version is really, really bad. We talked at length about how bad Avira's logging policy is for retaining your IP address. Well, buckle up, because McAfee's is somehow even worse. Like Avira, it too logs your IP address, but it doesn't stop there. McAfee's free VPN also logs or demands access to the URL and domain names in your browsing history, your purchase history, your hobbies and interests, your photographs, your biometric data, every conceivable detail about the device you're using, and information about other devices connected to your network. That's truly indefensible. If that seems like a long and weird list to you, it's because it is. Logging the URLs of websites you visit while using the VPN in combination with your IP address is just about as bad as it gets. Not content to just one-up Avira with its logging policy, though, McAfee also goes the extra mile with its jurisdiction, the USA. It is based in the United States of America. If you're wondering why that matters, that's totally fair. 
After all, the US is one of the globe's tech capitals, and there are hundreds of billion dollar corporations headquartered there, many of which you and I undoubtedly use every day. Now, hell, you're probably watching this video on Silicon Valley's very own YouTube, right? The difference is the way that the personal data is processed and handled and stored and respected. The USA is, aside from a handful of exceptions like uh, China or Iran, one of the absolute worst nations for digital privacy laws. First and foremost, the USA is a member of the Five Eyes Intelligence Sharing Alliance. It's made up of the US alongside fellow Anglophone powers Canada, the UK, Australia, and New Zealand. To put it in overly simple terms, these nations use the Five Eyes Agreement to get around rules on spying on their own citizens, instead getting the other nations to do the spying for them. They request and freely trade civilian online data among them. Companies based in one of those nations, like McAfee LLC, are subject to their whims. Of course, the US doesn't need any help from overseas when it comes to awful privacy laws. The PRISM Surveillance Program, Stored Communication Act, and an FCC hostile towards net neutrality and consumer rights will make the United States a horrible choice of place to base a VPN company. McAfee wasn't always a VPN company, and after decades based in the US, of course, it was never going to uproot its whole operation just to satisfy the concerns of VPN users like you and me. If you torrent at all and look towards a VPN to protect you while doing it, McAfee's Safe Connect is obviously a bad choice at this point, but it still somehow gets worse. How much worse? Try. It doesn't have a kill switch. Worse. We've actually already done a whole video on the kill switch and why we believe it's the single most important technical feature of a VPN, but I'll lay a brief explainer on you right now. VPNs are imperfect, and it can occasionally fail, which usually means breaking its internet connection. Your internet is the same as you probably already know. Sometimes there are just drops in service. It happens, and until we achieve 100% reliability, it's best to prepare for the worst case scenario. VPNs do this by implementing what's called a kill switch. When your connection drops, either the VPN or your internet itself the VPN kill switch makes sure that your real IP address and your traffic don't leak outside of the VPN tunnel. It keeps doing that until your connection is re-established and the VPN is then reactivated. We'll see on occasion otherwise respectable VPNs lacking a kill switch on certain platforms. McAfee Safe Connect 3 simply doesn't have one at all. It just hasn't bothered. It's remarkable really, it just doesn't have a kill switch. We will never, ever recommend you use a VPN like this. Privacy comes first, always. And not only is it a gross technical failure to protect users, but it's also a failure of morality. By not doing the bare minimum and implementing a functioning kill switch, McAfee has shown how much it really cares about its VPN and its users, which is to say, not a lot. You recognize this guy? If you've ever searched for a VPN before, then you've probably seen him around. I've actually had it happen uh, multiple times to me in real life. When I tell people that I cover VPNs for a living, they say, oh, I used a VPN before. And I say, great, which one? And they say, I don't know the name, but there was like a little flame logo. And I say, uh, no. This is Hola VPN. It's one of the most popular VPNs in the world, free or otherwise. It's also one of the highest rated and most downloaded extensions for Google Chrome. Unfortunately, I'm here to tell you that it, it is bad, but it's bad in a very special, fairly unique way. And while the rest of our rogues gallery in this video are simply bad through poor design choices or greed or lack of effort, I'd go as far to say that Hola VPN is actively malicious. See, that's because Hola VPN isn't really a VPN at all, or at least not in the way that we're used to. Ordinarily, a VPN will operate or rent a network of its own servers around the world. When you connect to one, it then reaches your traffic via it. This is how your IP address gets changed and your data gets encrypted. But that's not what the free version of Hola VPN does. Instead, when you use Hola VPN free, you become the VPN server. Every user connected to the Hola VPN free network is a node. And when you choose to connect to a Hola server in, let's say, Australia, your traffic is then spoofed using the IP address of a fellow real Hola user in Australia. And the same, of course, goes for you. Your IP address is up for grabs as soon as you start using Hola with any old user from anywhere in the world able to do whatever they want online using your IP address. That is a spectacular risk to take, one that is certainly not worth it to simply watch an exotic Netflix library. And what's so insidious about Hola Free VPN is that it relies on users not knowing any of this. And just look at the reviews. They're great, and why wouldn't they be? Hola works incredibly well. It can unblock geo-restricted services from anywhere on earth with unnerving consistency because the IP addresses it's offering up are from actual real residential connections rather than data centers. It relies on users not knowing the truth behind the way it operates, and it deliberately doesn't disclose any of this upfront. It's also based in Israel, a country which collaborates with the Five Eyes Nations, and it logs almost everything that you do while using it. In 2021, Hola launched a paid version that works in the same manner as a conventional VPN with its own servers, but needless to say, you shouldn't be using that either. Other bad VPNs simply risk your own online activity being logged and exposed. With Hola Free, 
you're risking being associated with the online activity of complete strangers. And you're also lining the pockets of its owners by giving them the bandwidth that you pay your ISP for for free. Google actually removed it from the Play Store, so you can't download it on Android anymore. On every level, this is a VPN to be avoided. Next up, we have Siphon. And I almost feel bad for having it follow Hola VPN in this list because it really approaches the VPN market from the complete opposite angle. Siphon was originally created to give free and reliable access to an uncensored internet for the hundreds of millions of people living under digital oppression around the world. And I want to clarify here that if that's your only way to obtain that, then you can do worse than Siphon. It's an honorable intention and exactly what consumer VPNs were created for. However, if you do not fit that description, then you really should not be using Siphon free. Let's begin, as is becoming tradition, with the logging policy. It's atrocious. The document itself is almost two and a half thousand words long, a great deal of which is dedicated to telling you all of the many, many bits of personal data Siphon will collect. And the top of that list is, you guessed it, your IP address. The main names of websites you visit and the IP address of the VPN server that you're connected to while using it are also there. And what's worse is that Siphon says it will retain all that data for up to 90 days. We have no idea how it decides when it will delete before that 90 days, which is a very long time, by the way. And here's something we haven't seen yet though. Siphon is the first VPN in this video to actively throttle your connection. This isn't just speculation from the data collector from our testing. Siphon openly admits it. Throttling, if you are unaware, is when your connection speeds are deliberately slowed down. Rather than allowing your data to flow freely, restricted only by the limitations of your own internet connection and the capacity of the VPN servers themselves, Siphon chooses to cap all connections at a maximum of just four megabits per second. Why do this? Well, for one, it means that the limited resources allocated towards the free product can stretch further. And secondly, it serves as an incentive for users to upgrade to the paid version. As an aside, I know we're talking about free VPNs here, but the paid version of Siphon is extremely overpriced. Please choose a better alternative, links in the description. Siphon is also insecure. It uses the highly outdated L2TP IPsec protocol for encryption which we were calling archaic all the way back in 2020, and there's no way to change it. One final note on Siphon that's extremely disappointing is that it doesn't even really achieve its core aim. You know how I said that it was designed to bypass internet censorship and web blocks? Well, sadly, our testing has found that it doesn't even really do that very well either. We operate a remote server in China. We can install VPNs on it and see if they unblock the internet for real in the country with the world's strictest firewall. Siphon routinely fails that test. In my working countries with slightly less sophisticated censorship, but we wouldn't want to count on it. Last and almost least, we have Kaspersky VPN Secure Connection Free. I couldn't let you go without one final, deeply disappointing antivirus-owned VPN. When we talked about McAfee, I said the US was, give or take, the worst jurisdiction on earth to incorporate a VPN within, with a few exceptions. Well, one of those exceptions would probably be Russia which is where Kaspersky is located. It's not really their fault. It was founded in 1997 by Eugene Kaspersky and quickly became one of, if not the biggest, cybersecurity vendors on the market. Now that Kaspersky has created its own VPN though, it's an issue too large to ignore. Kaspersky, both the man and the company, have been accused of having sympathetic ties to the Russian government. All politics aside, whatever your loyalties or views, Russia is factually one of the biggest oppressors of the free internet. The Russian government blocks access to thousands of websites, including YouTube and Top 10 VPN, and it has largely banned VPNs in one way or another. It's simply common sense not to entrust all of your browsing data to Kaspersky. It can be the best VPN going and we would still recommend against it. Of course, it isn't. It logs your DNS requests, your bandwidth usage, your connection timestamps, all stuff that you want to keep as private as possible. And the free version of Kaspersky VPN Secure Connection also limits you to just one server location, which is one automatically chosen by the app. This is quite common among free VPNs, particularly the bad ones. It saves the service money while providing you an incentive to upgrade, essentially giving you the bare minimum from your VPN. There's one last factor to be aware of that applies not just to Kaspersky, but also to Avira and McAfee. All three of these VPNs impose a data cap. Ordinarily, with a paid VPN, you have unlimited bandwidth. That means you can turn the VPN on, leave it on, and it provides you constant, unlimited protection. With these three VPNs though, you are heavily restricted. Kaspersky gives you 200 megabytes a day, Avira gives you 500 megabytes a month, and McAfee gives you just 250 megabytes a month. If you're wondering, no, that's not normal. Those are laughably small limits, and they are all but useless to anyone using the internet in the current year. In fact, if you're watching this video in 4K, you would have already hit the data limit with all three of those VPNs. Data caps are very common with free VPNs, and we can appreciate why they exist and the need for them. But some actually good free VPNs will give you uh, maybe 10 gigabytes per month, which is much, much more useful. 
Polo and Siphons free versions are both unlimited for what it's worth, but you still shouldn't use them. While discussing these five free VPNs has been sad business indeed, the really sad thing is that this is just the tip of the iceberg. The VPN market is flooded with VPNs that are just as bad or even worse. It's so, so important that you look into a VPN and read some reviews before you download one. Remember, the product is free, you are often the product. VPN companies will make money one way or another. And if you're paying nothing up front, then it's your data that's going to be compensating them. The data points and imagery used in this video were all up to date at the time of filming, but things can change overnight in the VPN world, so be sure to read our full reviews of all the products mentioned as we ensure that they're kept fully up to date on the website. As promised, links to them are in the description below, along with some other helpful pages that you might find relevant. I hope you found this video useful, and be sure to leave a comment if you have any questions for me. And why not like and subscribe while you're there? Stay safe, and I'll see you in the next one.